is Windows 11. And what we did, shifting from Windows 10 to Windows 11, again, with Teams, we understand that the world is changing. Um, you know, productivity, we need to keep productivity uh, where it was at pre-pandemic levels for working from home. We need to be more collaborative and build the collaboration into the operating system itself, not just rely on applications like Teams or Zoom or Slack or others to be that point of collaboration. So figuring out ways to build in the collaboration capabilities of the OS. Um, obviously, security, security, security is a huge, huge uh, focus for a number, if not every customer that I talk to. How am I protecting data? when I have a user connecting from home and then making sure I'm delivering a consistent environment when it comes to working from wherever you are, whether it's in the office, home or on the road. And so we were built, Windows 11 was built on top of 10. Obviously we took the framework of, of 10, built 11 to get help users get jobs done effect, effectively, collaboratively and efficiently and make sure we're achieving these goals in kind of a fresh look with a fresh environment and perspective, but also keeping the security and management pieces in place that we had with Windows 10 and previous Windows versions, Windows 7, that we knew organizations were gonna need in order to deploy them to their end users. And so, you know, if you've done deployments for Windows 10, if you've done deployments uh, for patches and updates in Windows 10, Windows 11 is not gonna be much different, if any difference at all. <coughs> One of the things, you know, being productive, and this is where I'll kind of talk to, you know, there's modern visuals. We, you know, modernized the start menu. There was a lot of, you know, when Windows 10 came out, you had the live tiles and all that. Live tiles are gone, right? There's integrated voice typing now. There's this thing called widgets, which, you know, some people love, hate, but they're, you know, customizable, can be removed. And, and the biggest thing with Windows 10 is the tablet experience. So, or I'm sorry, Windows 11. Windows 10, you could switch tablet uh, or PC with Windows 11. It's built for that seamless experience, regardless of whether or not you're using the device as a PC or as a tablet. Um, you have ways that you can do snapping, right? So before you could drag the title bar to the top of the bar or the sides if you wanted to snap to one place or the other. Now you get that directly in the window itself of, hey, I want this one in the middle. And then you can pop up and say, I want this, this over to the side because I'm doing comparisons between two spreadsheets. So you have that built in now into the OS for applications to say where you want these to, to end up on your screen. Not only that, you actually want it to be able to see, okay, remember where I was if I'm using multiple monitors. And so like right now I'm on a monitor, I'm, or I'm sorry, uh, and I'm docked. If I take this off and I come back and redock it, it'll know where I had those applications and put them back up there. And here you see the widgets piece of, uh, of Windows 11, again, provides surfacing things like weather, news, content, but you can also eventually going to be used to surface internal information from organizations and companies as well. Um, collaborative. This is where the tight integration with Teams comes in. So you think about, okay, I'm typically in, in a Zoom or a Teams meeting or a WebEx meeting, whatever that may be, and I need to go share a window. Well, right now, today, in most of those, and this is this comes with Windows 11, you need to go into the the meeting application itself, hit share, figure out am I sharing the window, am I sharing the application, am I sharing something else, and then make sure you're sharing that, and not more than what you want, and then it just becomes a little bit, you know, okay, did I do it? Did I not do it? Can you see my screen now? I can go directly into the the taskbar hover over that application in teams and just hit share my window it was uh, i don't know if this has come to the mainstream of windows 11 i believe it's available if you're on the insider preview or an insider build but this was so much easier i don't have to go worry and find my team's meeting window i can just hover over it hit share in teams and it pops up makes it so much easier um, the other piece too you'll see on the bottom right is the integration with the microphone feature I don't have to go find, am I muted, am I not muted? Directly in my taskbar on the bottom right in the system tray, I can see if it's highlighted blue like that, I'm, I am, you know, my mic is open, it's on, everyone can hear me, and I don't have to go find Teams now to mute my mic. I can do it directly from that system tray, click it, and it'll mute my mic in Teams and, and effectively everywhere as well. Uh, security, obviously security on the forefront. Uh, one of the biggest enhancements coming with Windows 11, while it's not available yet because the, the, the hardware and the functionality within the hardware vendors is not there yet, is we built Windows 11 for um, 
uh, something called Project Pluton, where right now devices come with TPM chips. And by default, you, you know, with Windows 11, need to have TPM enabled in order to install it on the device. But Pluton is going to bring that TPM into the CPU itself. Right now, they're two separate devices sitting on the board, and there is, while low, the ability that you can sniff some of the traffic on the bus between those two devices. Now, with Pluton, if it's built into the CPU, there's no sniffing going on there. There's no way a bad actor can get in between those two things and, and get that data out. Windows 11 is built for that next generation of security, right? It's integrated with things, you know, Windows Hello for business. It's even... Um, easier to integrate with Azure Active Directory when it comes to device registration and connecting to your organization. So now I don't have to worry about domain joining. I can just go send something to my end user, send a, de a device to my end user, not have to worry about additional things like certificates like you did had to do with Windows 11. It's more easily integrated with Azure AD for device registration and user registration. Consistency. Probably the biggest question we had moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10 is, are my apps going to work, right? So the same question is coming up now. Are my apps going to work when I'm going from Windows 10 to Windows 11? And right now, the answer is, from our testing, 99% plus are going to work. And the reason is, as I said earlier, Windows 11 was built on the same underlying framework as Windows 10. So app compatibility should remain consistent between Windows 10 and Windows 11. It's built on this. They're both built on the same foundation. And so we want to make sure that, and there's ways through things like app assurance and programs that you can get uh, access to if you have an issue with an app, where we will work directly with that vendor to make sure that we can help uh, get that app working on a Windows 11 device. Um, the other thing with, um, you know, we're managing now, it's Windows 11, is now built for managing from the cloud. You know, up you know, Windows 7, early onset of Windows 10, it was all being able to manage within a, a, an office, within a, an all corporate office network or corporate network. Now, devices are all over the place. I mean, even pre-pandemic, you had that too. Windows 11 is built to be managed through the cloud. So you don't have to be connected via VPN. You don't have to be connected back to the corporate network in order to receive updates, receive status back to make sure that Yes, it has the latest virus definitions. Yes, it has all these things on to make it a compliant device to access the data within your organization. Um, integrated with things like universal print. Um, not sure if you're aware, but it's a new feature in Microsoft 365 where you can register printers uh, directly to our, our 365 services. You no longer have to have print servers on-prem or in your data center to connect to. So it's, being, it's removing that additional administrative capability and building it directly into the OS see that you have the capability to print from wherever you are. Should you know, you be traveling between offices now, now that some of this is lifted and you have travel, you don't have to worry about going to add a printer. It just pops up and you can go select it based on where you are. Um, I talked about App Assurance. Uh, John earlier talked about Azure Virtual Desktop. Again, you know, Windows 10, Windows 11 provides that seamless experience wherever you are. And it's built, actually, you know, newer devices. You can see something like, you know, Surface Go, Laptop Go, some of these smaller devices. And the customer I'm looking, uh, working with right now is, hey, can I get a lower-end device, pair with Windows 11, do some minimal management on that device, but really put their desktop in the cloud? And Windows 11 provides them the ability to do that where they don't have to deploy a lot of inf a lot of services and infrastructure in their own environment. It's all done through Azure. And so then resources get started. You know, again, you can, you know, when, uh, Windows 11 is mainstream today. As I say, it was the uh, main, mainstream back in October. Um, feel free to deploy within your environment, play with it. You know, again, it's, you know, being able to collect insights on what type of PCs do you need to refresh? Again, there, it needs to be a modern CPU. You need to have TPM and TPM enabled. So there are certain care, certain prerequisites you need to know about before deploying it. Um, but, you know, it's ready to deploy alongside Windows 10 devices. As we're making updates to Windows 11, some of those updates will be coming with Windows 10. Um, you can go look at the roadmap for Windows 10. And, and I believe we have, you know, we still have the 20 H20 H2 um, I'm sorry, 21H2 build that just came out from Windows 10. Um, so, you know, some of those are being ported to between both environments now. Um, but, you know, again, at a certain point, Windows 10 is going to go the way like Windows 7 and, and all of our previous Windows did, and it's going to be Windows 11 moving forward. So planning now and being able to look at how am I going to manage this in my environment 
is the best step forward. And then and in slides, you know, there's, um, you know, talk to your Microsoft rep, talk to um, others, figure out how do I get access to it? You know, can I pilot it? You know, there's a lot of resources we can bring to bear to support it. Um, and with that, I think I finished with a minute to spare and we'll take any questions on Teams or Windows 11.